Audio visual from an Irish perspective. This is the All Things Techie Podcast. Welcome along, I'm Justin Dawson, it's the All Things Techie Podcast, episode 21, the March edition. We didn't do a February edition because at the time, COVID-19 was just really hitting into play with ICE and stuff and things got held back with work and commitments and my co-host Simon Lang is very busy with work as well. So um, this episode, believe it or not, is all about working remotely because Ireland has pretty much shut down shop with regards to schools, higher education, museums, parks, you name it, we have we have stopped shop. Um, shops are st- still staying open around Ireland, but uh, on a limited basis. So we're talking about working remotely. And I want to say thank you to all our guests, both the private sector and public sector, that came online uh, yesterday in this rather sporadic type of podcast but it was all about working remotely from the private sector and NEC Graeme Kirkpatrick, uh, Michelle Leray from the Mostly AV podcast, Chris Nito from Star and Marketing, Noel Kennedy from Involve, Mike Slammer from the Discovery Channel, believe it or not, in the USA, Adam Harvey from the University of Hertz talking about public sector and universities and how they're working remotely, and Joe Way, Dr. Joe Way from the University of Southern California. Thank you all for joining us. Enjoy the program and remember to those even not even working in the technology sector if you need help reach out for those who are willing to give help there are so many freelance audiovisual technologists and technologists that are willing to help you work remotely and a lot of these freelance people they are working on their own business so if COVID-19 has put a halt to things and put a halt to installs and live events, they need to fund their family too. Reach out to them. If you want to reach out to me for any technical advice, please get in contact with me. My details is on the screen. Other than that, enjoy the program. Please subscribe to the All Things Techie podcast. We do this uh, hopefully every month, but now that we are working from home we might be able to do more programs because i have less commute to work and so stuff like that but we want to also alleviate the cabin fever so let's let's have some virtual calls people enjoy the program all things techie podcast episode 21 the All Things Techie Podcast is a product of the Extreme Media Network. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, please visit www.extrememedia.ie. That's X-T-R-E-M-E, media.ie. This is the All Things Techie Podcast, episode 21, the most crazy podcast and most live um, people in our podcast that we've ever actually ever had because we are talking all about the topic of working remotely and um so if we're gonna like actually say that if anyone has any babies that walk into the room colors pets that walk into the room that is perfectly and utterly allowed because we are demonstrating that number one working remotely is number one number two it is that working remotely is Sporadic and like <laughs> we've seen, we've seen the clip of the British sports. Oh, and of course, like even even Chris ringing a bell there in the background as well. Um, but it, it's also we've seen the clips of the British Broadcasting Corporation BBC and like even on live news television where kids have been pulled out of and even like that. That's, that's my back door, and there's 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 my uh, four month old baby being introduced to to the podcast and um, look, look i love the mohawk that is adorable i know yeah, exactly it's, it's just like the hair isn't even growing at the moment but uh and then my other toddler son thankfully is asleep at the moment but he did join daddy uh, this morning when we are in lockdown as as of recording this podcast 
uh, all higher ed, all primary schools, all secondary schools, all museums in Ireland are in shutdown mode. Apart from this is this is the interesting thing because it's Great Britain, and Noel will give me some comments on this in a minute. Yep. No. You're not in lockdown, and neither is Northern Ireland. So, like, if you are sitting on the border of Northern Ireland, and um, your kids could be in the south going to a school, and they could be off, but yeah, you're still working if you're in Northern Ireland at the moment. But no, why isn't England following suit to Ireland? We, we 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 know we stand on our own feet, right? So we'll make the right decision a few months after everybody else has made the right decision. <laughs> Um, and then and we'll just get it all sorted so uh, you know seriously at the moment um it is quite a bit of panic over here there's a lot going on everybody's worried about it um nobody really knows what's going on nobody knows the proper answer there's all the social media stuff that's telling you everybody's going to get it and it's all going to end you've got to get a load of toilet paper um, totally, yeah, it's out of stock you, <laughs> you, you would want to see the shops yesterday so i i literally was actually working remotely yesterday for half the day and then uh, the the news came out from our irish government uh, and our team shop as we call them well he's over in america i love that like he, he was supposed to be over to give trump a bowl of shamrock and they the only reason he went over to america is to give him a bowl of shamrock and it doesn't actually happen <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, cheers for that, guys. Thanks for costing us a couple of extra million when we're going to be like in a recession probably because of this COVID 19. But um, so everything everything went into lockdown, and you want to see the shops yesterday getting toilet paper and whatever. And I believe like everyone went shopping yesterday, and oh, we have Joe Way also joining us as well. Hello, Joe. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Joe. Hey, hold on. Look, I got my leprechaun for you. <laughs> no, you, you know what? You, you've got you've got more gifts than Trump got from Leo Varadkar because Leo didn't even get his bowl of shamrock this year. <laughs> uh, so the, the shops were a bit pandemic uh, yesterday as people rushed to buy toilet roll, cereal, you name it. I had to buy nappies and beer. Like, that was my essentials yesterday. <laughs> but... I think that like in a week's time, everyone that wants to go to just go, right, calm down. It's not that crazy and the shops will replenish. But as for- Justin, our... don't make me prove you wrong again. It's not going away in a week. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, we do have a doctor in this podcast. I right. think the only doctor in the podcast, Dr. Joe. Who that will... is true. Yeah. <laughs> who will prove us wrong. I, I'm not the helpful kind of doctor. But you know what? It, it gets me preferred to seating on planes, so I take it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I do like that. I confirm yeah. or deny I've used the doctor card. <laughs> I, when, I when can, well, you know what? I can't confirm or deny that, like, I've, I've tried at times to just say that, like, oh, yeah, I'm going over to, like, um, my wife's honeymoon or something if, if my wife has got <laughs> going on the plane. Just to see, can I get boosted up? It's never worked, unfortunately, for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one has a story here, has he? No, 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 I'm not coming out with that one. Not right time. <laughs> Chris, can you can you confirm or deny that you've ever used anything to get on planes? I cannot. I got no status. I, I, I fly a lot, but unfortunately on the on the frequent flyer planes around here, I'm never gonna be silver or gold or any of that. I know. I'm just either. collecting mileage to hopefully one day get a half price ticket if I'm lucky. Uh, I think we need to take a lesson. Oh, you can get great, great tickets to Italy right now. Italy, <laughs> the time. Okay, Joe. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. Uh, well, our two American guests can probably explain to us why is the Trump cancelled all flights to two, Europe three. except Ireland and England? Oh, because he has like golf courses. Said? Yeah, because yeah. exactly. he has oh. golf courses and resorts there. Yeah. Come on. He said it was because they have oh. strong, like, moral turpitude. Yes, to <laughs> hold people Man. in and out. I'm like, wow. Man. I don't know. I, 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 dude, uh, I when it comes know. to that sort of stuff, the politicians here, I'm telling you, we don't have sports anymore. They, sports is pretty much canceled. Uh. So somebody's got to, you know, take up the comedy bit and occupy our time. So that's what we got politicians for. I'm not okay. a, I'm not a politics guy. So if you want somebody who is going to 
not play the politics card, I will be that guy because I absolutely despise the politicians. But, do you know what? Actually, we, uh, I'm going to tell you more about tech <laughs> going on. So my 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 58 inch TV broke down like two weeks ago, and my wife 58 was, inch. What yeah. brand was that? Where did you buy this size? This is this is Ireland tech. No, no, there really is a 58 inch available. I saw really? it. Yeah. Samsung or someone makes a 58 inch, right? Yeah. Okay, wow, I had no idea. All right, continue. I know. I know. Okay. Yeah. So, so one of the panels goes down, and they turned around and told me it's going to cost me 650 euro to to fix. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, so I actually uh, persuaded my wife that. Like even before we got into the lockdowns and cabin fever, we actually agreed that we could go out and buy a new TV. So um, I bought a new TV the other day. That was that was great. But um, today, then it seems like all my electronics in my house is is breaking down. My microwave decided to start sparking on me. So I went down to my local electrical store. Now don't forget, guys, everywhere is shut down. I look out on my street that usually has a lot of kids playing out on the street at the moment. Everyone is keeping their kids inside. But I went out to my local electronics store about 20 minutes away. Jen even told me, like, bring, bring some gel to wash your hands after you're touching things. Okay, 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 right. There was a, <laughs> there was a toy store. Uh, beside the electronics store, and you want to see all the parents bring their kids into the toy store, store just for an hour, just so they can tire themselves out. I was like, why aren't you guys in school? If you're going to bring them into a toy shop, why are you guys in school? Where they can all touch things? They might as well just take them to a ball pit, really? Like, hello? Yeah. What? Yeah. My, uh, my son, when he was like three, uh, he was young. He was about three, because my daughter had just been born. Uh, we made the mistake of letting him play at one of those. Uh, we were in a clothing store for kids, and they had like a Lego set up or whatever. And he he played, and you know we did not pay attention to what he was doing. Two days later, he's in the. Uh, we basically had to take him to the hospital with the rot rotavirus. Oh and my God. Rotavirus. Uh, but this was before the shot. Uh, he was still yeah. young. And of course the next year they came with it. And rotavirus is pretty much in it, it's, it's nothing is staying inside. Everything's coming out like liquid uh -huh. and it, it, at one point, And my wife will it, thinks I'm nuts. I, I did not know what to do. I'm like, D diapers can't hold this. I, right. I blue tarped my, like a painter's tarp. Right, I rolled a plastic tarp out on the living room. I, I sat him down. I'm like, if there's a leak, we we should be okay. Like that's brilliant. I've been preparing for weird, you know, <laughs> lockdowns for a while. Uh -huh. you know, between this and you know, uh, I was just talking about this just before with my father-in-law, because he was in he, he he was here, and I said it's great to see you. Now go lock yourself up because he's in his seventies. Please do yeah. not leave the house for the rest of the of the weekend. But uh, he stopped by and he said hi. And I said, listen, I've been preparing for this for years. You know, we here in New Jersey, unfortunately, we get hit with the hurricanes. So mm -hmm. we constantly have, I have toilet paper on lockdown. You know, I've had that ready. I've been prepped. I always have the ramen. My kids have like a thing for the cheap ramen. It's good. That's, you know, you can't have, you can't have this bougie taste. And when you, you know, an, an exquisite taste for, for high end stuff when, you know, when everything's falling apart. So you got some ramen, you got some pasta. You know, I've, I, I've made the comment to, to my wife. I said, we're probably gonna be the only people like everybody else is eating like soup out of a can. I'm gonna be making like tortellinis. I'm gonna be making pasta, lasagna. I mean, you name it. it, it as long as the pasta, the cured meats and the garlic lasts, I got you covered. I'll be feeding the neighborhood if I have to. Well, Joe, oh, sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Jen sent me out and bought like I think I bought about four big bags of potatoes. Oh, so, like we're doing an Irish style. We're just doing potatoes. <laughs> of course, yeah, you, you, guys le you guys left the country because of potatoes. So yeah. I, I can imagine <laughs> potatoes are a staple out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, I have like dry mashed potatoes ready in a cupboard just in case the flake. Yeah. yeah. Never I wonder. Had, you never had mashed potato like flaked mashed potatoes instant mashed potatoes, I guess. Yes. You haven't truly lived. Yeah. I want to uh, 
I think I can get some traction on a bumper sticker for my generation that says, been prepping for this since Y2K. <laughs> so, so true though so, so true not for the beat that was the quote of the podcast <laughs> how, how many people at like eleven fifty nine were like yeah back then yeah i know, you know I we're know. waiting i'm staring at my i'm staring at my computer i'm staring at my clock i'm like stop i dare you i dare you to stop and just lose your shit right now <laughs> nothing happened well actually what, when I was buying this TV, like I just got back from the uh, TV shop and uh, it was start like we had four seasons in one yesterday. And the there was a lightning that strikes going on, all lightning going on all around uh, my part of Dublin. And I was thinking to myself, well, hold on a minute. If lightning hits, that's going to be my internet out. How am I supposed to work from home? Oh, so, yeah. You know, yeah. That, so going on that basis, guys, you know, okay, I'm going to go straight into the higher ed thing and talk to Dr. Joe first. You have been preparing for this for the past week and a half, Joe. How is the setup? I, I bet you're going floor to sleep knowing Joe it has everything under control. Yeah. You know, you, you know it's, it's interesting because you say we've been par- preparing this for a week and a half. I am actually completely blessed. We've been preparing this for about six months. Um, because we have started our own digital transformation a while back with the idea of moving all of our services online to be able to move to the cloud and, you know, to be able to pay for them over a licensing model that Chris might really like at some point. Uh, no. And, uh, and so we've been working on doing that. So when this happened, um, I remember being brought into a meeting going, well, what's going to happen? How can we do this? Like, we got you. We're good. We're good to go. Uh, uh, brilliant. Yeah. Did we know whether it was really going to work on a large <laughs> scale? Uh, it was all in theory it would work. And yes, we did a lot of, you know, let's pray really, really hard and hope this thing actually, you know, comes together. But, you know, we ran after our first official day of all online was Wednesday. And uh, we saw it at our, at our cap, our max, we had 18,000 simultaneous Zoom calls going on on our campus Hold on up. our network repeat that 18,000 18, yeah. zoom calls and you know what our entire infrastructure was actually it handled it it was less traffic than we get on an average evening on netflix how about that? Our, our actual impact was lower with 18,000 simultaneous zoom calls and we got it on college campus with kids watching how many students does usc have joe uh, well, 57,000 total in attendance, but that includes faculty that might be using it and stuff like that. I think we're at uh, about 37,000 all said and done. 20, wow. 000. So, Joe, is anyone on campus for you now? On campus? We are still on campus. Uh, the students, we they have spring break next week, so they're being asked, they will be moving out uh, uh-huh. and going so this week is kind of a hybrid week where they're still here on campus, mm-hmm. but they're doing their classes online from either their dorms or uh, our computer labs and things like that. So okay. we actually expect things to be better next week because they won't be all the traffic won't be. Oh yeah, at work. So um, easier well, to have, disinfect. But then again, yeah, I know we have we're going through a lot of bottles of Lysol. But <sighs> but you know, but then on the flip side of that, you look and go now you at least we know we have a great network. Well, what happens when people go home, people who fly to rural areas and they're going to attend classes? So it could be a whole, there's, we can't control that. Yeah. Uh, but, what, but we found that, uh, that I, I tell you, there are no winners out of this, but if you wanted to call there a winner, Zoom is the winner uh, mm-hmm. because they have won every university is running to them. They've been playing well. They've been getting information out. They've been helping institutions get on really quick. And they're reliable. I've not heard anyone say there's been major issues that would you could put on that platform's fault. So not that I want to give them a commercial, but I think they deserve well, it. Well, I, I think we, I'm going to actually plug them as well because I, I can buy for that as well. I'm, I'm, I noticed that Zoom is now opening up everything like your pro licenses. Hey, yeah, try it out. You can keep it, keep it, keep it going until the COVID-19 is over. Hook, reel them in hook, line, and sinker, 
Google, I noticed, opened up the Google Meet and have record features as well if you're a Google campus. But yeah. is, is it going to be that this is the virtual meeting winner? Like, just go out and offer them everything, and then when it, everything calms down... Chris, you, you probably know with, with all the different bits and pieces of virtual meeting software going on, is, is this the way that virtual meeting softwares can win? Well, right now it's got a lot of a lot of eyes on it, obviously, and people with good going to work uh, remotely. I, I've I've been working remotely now for for about five years, uh, full time, five, about four or five years now, um, on and off in in some of my other uh, roles and responsibilities. But um, a couple of things before we even get right to that point, let's let's talk about foundation of what you need to do on a remote work basis, right? Um, five years ago. Uh, the data speeds at your house weren't even close to what they are today. No. Right. Six months ago, I dropped cable internet and went to fiber. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Simply because my cable internet um, couldn't keep up with what I do on a, on a, on a daily basis regarding video. Uh, The other advantage to, to fiber is that imagine if I was on cable right now with the entire state of New Jersey and the entire world, going and now wanting to do video. Now in New Jersey alone, the way cable internet works is if I light up and I'm streaming and, and Joey down the street comes home from school and starts watching Netflix. Look, Joey. Not you, a little Joe. Joey. <laughs> Joey. Little Joe. Little, little, little Joey, kind of short Joey with a little bit of hair. He comes home, starts Aww. watching Netflix, right? And then so-and-so up there decides to call his mom from his computer my internet is dropping because yeah. we're all sharing that bandwidth. And that's the principle behind cable internet. So for, you know, my first thing that, I, one thing I put out on Twitter was, you know, you got to take a look at your, your internet service provider right now before it goes from bad to worse because everybody's coming home. So if you have the ability to switch, you mm-hmm. go to a fiber where you pay the extra, at least mm-hmm. right now or try whatever they're giving you, my best advice is to do that. Um, now, when you're going into the actual services, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I obviously, you know, full transparency, I'm a Zoom distributor, right? Mm-hmm. I, I distribute a lot of products that go into the Zoom ecosystem. Same you personally, thing. what's your website? Chris Me Neto personally. Zoom Rooms? Well, for Star- yeah. Star- for Starin, uh, oh, okay. that's what Thank we you, do. Chris. Um, yeah. But I, I'm sorry, if I'm going to say transparency, I guess I got to I got to add the fact that I work for a company that deals it. So, you know, when you're looking at the various players out there, they're all great, right? The fact that we even have that is awesome. 10, 15 years ago, you were very limited and it was very sketchy and yeah. you had dial up and God, I don't want to go into what was as opposed to what we're dealing with today. You got, inappro- you, got, you got the improved data speeds at home, which allow a, a lot of us to come home. You got better uh, software and codec that allows, you know, uh, this call here did not, could not really happen a handful of years ago. Oh, wow. You got five people on a call without, an M- without some sort of MCU attached to it and not the Marvel, you know, cinematic universe for the people that may not be familiar with our jargon. MCU is a... <laughs> Is, is, is a music. <laughs> Just want to clarify that. Thank you for some uh, for some uh, enlightening horror music. <laughs> no, I, 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 I may go make it. Don't weekend. play that, dude. I may go go set my microwave and go or make a sandwich while I wait for that thing to connect. Yeah, <laughs> it's like an automatic. That's like the Pavlovian type of uh, of trigger for us older folks or Gen Xers. You hear that go and you automatically run to make a sandwich because you're not connecting to the internet. Anytime. Chris, let, let, let's just even add to that and just go, at the moment, every kid in Ireland is, well, Southern Ireland anyways, is at home and they're not allowed outside the house for most of their parents unless they're going to toy shops like we discussed. But they're on their PlayStation 4s, they're on their Xboxes, they're going to be bringing down the internet. I hope, I hope as parents, you guys know how to tweak your routers and set those limits and set some uh, QoS in there. I know I called my friends who are IT nerds because I'm not. I can fix a TV. That's what I'm good for. I'm the cable repair guy to my friends, but I'm not the internet repair guy. So no. just want to point that out. Well, there. But there are settings within a router. If you're smart and you're working from home, here's another one. Set that. 
right? Because the last thing you want, I, I'm cool with hop. letting my dog come in or my kids storming through the door, you know, but I, don't mess with my, my internet speeds. That's the, right now, it's the one thing that I, 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 that, if that goes down, dude, I don't get a paycheck. I need my internet and I need my speeds to continue doing what I do. But and, do you really want to actually turn around to your kids and go, what, and, and sort out that, they're on a little subnet and because they're running a bit slower with playing their football game on their PlayStation while daddy works. You I got, you know I got my kids on their check right now. If you see, if you would have seen the procedure that I had to get my kids in the house yesterday, right? I sprayed them with Lysol, right? <laughs> I made them come in one at a time. I left my son in his car. You don't come inside until your sister's upstairs taking a shower. And I'm like, I'm playing, please. I'm handing them wipes as they come in pegging them with like Clorox bleach wipes. I'm like you touch every handle because we had our first case appear in, in, in my town. Hmm. Okay. So now all of a sudden it went from, you know, dad's okay to dad being crazy. What crazy town are you in? What town I'm are you in? in? I'm in Freehold, New Jersey. Freehold. I so, picture this weekend, Chris creating an external man trap <laughs> that you'll have to go into. And well, like, I've already sanitize. my neighbors that I'm going to go flat tire my car at the entrance to my development. And I'll stand there and pizza guy can put the, the pizza on the hood and, the, and I'll put my money on the trunk and we'll do business that way from that point forward. I watched Walking Dead. I know how this works. I'm but ready for this. This is the scary thing. It, it feels like we are in a movie at the moment. Oh, it's yeah. Unreal. Unreal. I'm sorry. I'm taking up too much of your time. No, Guys, no, no, you, no, you no. jump no, in. No. What I want to also say is like we're talking about bandwidth, but equipment, right? Some people say, I love to work from home. Great. Okay. Now it's the fact that the government have said you have to work from home. And people are using their own personal devices. And forget that even internet speeds, there's no guarantee that someone has a Windows 7 laptop in the corner who's trying to do just emails or whatever. So this is what where it comes. Who's responsible? Who should be responsible? That's my biggest question. Should it be that the universities and private sector are buying all this equipment, getting it delivered to DHL or FedEx or UPS out to the employer? Amazon. Uh, or Amazon, <laughs> and say, there you go, guys, set up and go. I'm going to go to Joe on that first, because Joe, you're working in higher ed. What is the story with lecturers working from home? You know, um, I believe what, what we're doing is we're just raiding everywhere. You know, you, we also have, the, we got the power to use our, 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 our big boy toys and, and, uh, and power to get out. We, well, I think we just got 50 new laptops uh, MacBook Pros delivered this morning. Uh, I will, you know, my P card uh, with Amazon has been maxed a number of times in the last few days. Um, money is rolling. That's why I said, this is going to hurt the economy. And the, I don't know how stocks are down with how, how I'm spending money because I think I've put more money into the economy in the last few days than, uh, than I probably ever have. Um, but again, it, the question you asked is should, who should pay for it? Hmm. Uh, yeah, the, why wouldn't the business pay for it? I mean, if, mm -hmm. if a business wants to continue yeah. and they have, you know, they have work to do, I mean, things don't stop. Um, your priorities change and the way you're going to work has changed. Are you going to have a certain amount of, uh, you know, disruption? Absolutely. But who, I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, I know there's a bit of a, who doesn't really have a laptop nowadays? Well, that's, that's the who, point. Or a smart but, voice. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's and now. I granted there are tons, and even in higher ed, we have a lot of people who surprisingly don't have laptops that we're trying to get them to, so that they're not impacted. But yet, we all know how to work nowadays. Just what Chris was saying, it's a different time. Mm. Everyone knows how to FaceTime somebody now. Everybody has at least done some type of mobile work. We have all of our work emails sent to our phone. We're we're just a different type of society now than we were years ago. And that was the talk on AV and the AM this last week and really for the last couple of weeks, Ken, it goes to is, yeah, we're not the days where a telepresence room had to be racks and racks of hard codecs and cameras that no one know how to use and all of these things. And now we are a walk-in and 
meet and go and connect society. Hmm. That's just the way we are. And I think that that now, how does that work in higher ed? Because faculty are not used to doing that, right? They're yes. not used to taking their, their <laughs> course. My faculty and, don't know how to send an email, Joe. Yeah, well, well, they'll send it to you to tell you they need help in the room. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, <Not> this. <laughs> but, uh, but so that's really the, the issue is now can you help change the way they're working? And this is the whole thing. Like we've been doing online classes for a long time. Now, taking a traditional on-campus course and just teaching it online, it wasn't designed to be online. So there is a difference in that where an actual online course has pre-done lectures, it has, you know, downloads of PDFs, it has usually more essays rather than mm -hmm. exams. You know, the, the, the way it's formatted is different. And now we're asking faculty to take something that they're not used to having to proctor in a certain way and now doing it in a different format. But that doesn't mean it can't be done. No. And it, and, and what, I mean, what learning management system are you using, Joe? Oh, don't even get me started there. Um, we actually, <laughs> um, we have, <laughs> well, did you hear it? They just sold it. Blackboard yeah. just sold it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, don't, I don't know how weird the Blackboard sold that. Um, so, we are officially a Blackboard campus, but yeah. we, we do let certain uh, uh, of the different departments, depending upon their needs, select one of their own. So we actually have Canvas here and everything. And I think we actually have six different ones, if you count I, it all. I'm going to interrupt you there because walking along, working remotely, <laughs> walking remotely is Adam Harvey from the University of Hertz. Adam, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Um, okay, you, thank you for joining in in the conversation. Adam, <laughs> um, at least you're getting loads of fresh air outside because the moment, yeah, really you're good. moving and you're away from any type of viral things that might be going uh, in public transport. <laughs> um, but how I, we were talking about Ireland on lockdown, is there any talks of your university being closed? Uh, I think in the background there's some things going on. Uh, we had our first reported case announced to us yesterday. You know, that student's being looked after and is in isolation at home, not on campus. So um, I, should, I think plans are afoot. Uh, so there's certainly a lot of discussions going on by the management team at the moment. Um, my IT development um, team, there's 38 of us. We've all been trialling a two-day working from home uh, test on the system just to make sure that everybody can connect everyone's got everything they need um, so uh, yeah we'll just see how it goes really I've just we, I joined a, a 38 person teams call about half an hour ago of the entire this call is much more interesting Adam Wait, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Teams, teams can handle 38 people well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all shocked as well all <laughs> on the screen at once but it was all right it was okay it's, it's, you know it's one of those things you know um Teams doesn't have the put your hand up thing. So it's about, it's, it's a different kind of etiquette, really, for meeting uh, online. Babble. So, yeah, that's, yeah. it's uh, interesting times. So, so, Adam, like, in your test, I, I was asking Joe about teams. Joe, Joe impressed me by telling me how many thousands of people he had on, a Zoom, on Zoom calls throughout <laughs> the university. But uh, do you think you're ready? Do you, like, what, how, how are the faculty taking it and how are... Are they ready to, to to just do all everything online? Well, I you know I, I don't know the official stance of the university yet. I think we're going to get some notifications over the weekend, but I think it's inevitable. So um, we are we are reasonably geared up for it, I think. But and and we've done a lot of testing in the last week or so, just trying to get people out into their homes and testing the resilience of our VPN and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I know there's been investigations into various products at the moment. I think what we what we have running potentially isn't what we need at the moment. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking into it. Now, I, I did ask Joe this question earlier, Adam, and I'm going to throw it on a higher ed in the UK to you. Um, who's responsible of equipment for lectures and faculty? If they say, I, I don't have a laptop, I, I don't want to use my personal laptop. Or is it use your personal laptop and that's it? Uh, well, I think a lot of the key start. I mean, like my, I, you know, I sit in an IT development team, and you know, virtually everybody in that team is kind of geared up for remote working anyway. 
so we have laptops we have you know little uc devices headsets and everything so it's okay for us i mean we've been trialing the stuff with our customer service agents on the help desk to route all the calls back to their homes not everyone has um university mobile devices you know laptops and stuff a lot of people are desktop based but you know the, the university as a whole has a lot of it kit and i'm aware that you know there's been a lot of collecting spare stuff up going around offices at the moment which is you know only right it's a university asset and if we need it for something else in this time then that's absolutely what should happen yeah, well, it's it's like I have a couple of loaner laptops in my school, and I think at this stage, every single one of them has been taken home by a different member <laughs> of the faculty of staff, even though they're supposed to be kept on campus. But there we go. Um, and there, yeah, now- we, we we had to sort of filling a like you know a survey after day one of our trialing working like mass working from home. Um, you know, I do it occasionally. I don't do it particularly often. So my, my actual That's because environment... because you are in the same great. position as me, Adam. <laughs> you have a toddler at home and you'd rather be in work. <laughs> I have a toddler right here, look. <laughs> so, I told you this program's going to be great fun. So yeah, you're on my, on my way to pick the other one up from school because my wife's had to nip out for a couple of hours. <laughs> Well, wait, wait till wait till England goes into shutdown mode, Adam. Have you got everything in stock? Have you got bread and milk in stock? Yeah, we've we've been okay. I mean, I think there was quite a big hit on the supermarkets last night after the uh, announcements in the UK government about you know self isolation for seven days with mild symptoms. So, uh, yeah, I think the shelves were stripped bare last night, but um, it all seems to be settling down a little bit. I sort of have not been panic buying, but you know, stocking up on essential stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm all right at the moment, but, you know, who knows? Things will change. Now, I, I think the funniest one that like, I've heard about working from home and during emergency situations where management teams are not prepared correctly, and that's where we go into what... We will, the next question will be, what do we need to work from home? But um, one of my sisters uh, who works in a financial uh, firm uh, got told that they were all getting delivered IKEA desks to work from home. Now, I think there's some more important things to to buy before working remotely from home. That's well, you say wait, that, hold right? On, hold on. Uh, can I just add real quick that if you if you, if somebody sends me an IKEA desk, that's more of a punishment than it is a. I mean, I got to put that thing together. Well, that's how they, they have to figure out how to fill your eight-hour day. <laughs> <laughs> right, but this is a real, this is a real I, problem, right? Who did I right? piss off to get an IKEA put together desk, which is going to come in a in a foreign language, uh, with, well, actually with no language on? I got to decipher what those symbols are. No, thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. Well, like I say this is this is kind of a, like a real problem. So because I don't work from home very often. You know, I'm sort of setting up on the kitchen table just after I'm clearing the kids' breakfast stuff away. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, it, it does cause a bit of a problem. Well, you know, it's a bit of a, I can't start work when I want to and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, yeah I've ordered a little desk off Amazon this morning that I need to arrive because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really geared up for long-term remote working. So, you know, I need to be, you know, my environment needs to be right for, to, for me to be productive. So I'm just trying to sort that out at the moment because... Rocking up on the kitchen table when all the stuff going around around me is just not not good. Now, how how often are you going to get disturbed, Adam, from little Junior there? Nothing. On. Well, that depends. I mean, my you know kid one is at school five days a week at the moment. Um, at the moment, the little one, the little one is sort of taken care of three days a week. My wife works three days a week, so you know it's covered, but only at the moment. So um, you know we'll we'll see. I. We'll just have to deal with it the best we can. I mean, a lot of the design work I do is it's not time critical. Don't need to do it in office hours. So I can kind of deal with the kids and do it at night. And, you know, we'll make the best of it and all that. <laughs> now, it, it's questionable. Like, I, I looking at Ireland, okay, we have the state exams that usually take place in uh, late May, early June. They might be postponed for a while. Um, I've had my... Uh, residence group on WhatsApp all week going, or, or, or all, all the past 24 hours going, has anyone got any school plans of teaching people how to do maths or English to just keep them busy? Um, so this is a real advantage, I think, for a lot of primary schools uh, to be going, okay, hold on a minute. Or even if you were 
uh, very entrepreneurial to just go, uh, I can teach online stuff to Zoom and I'll show you how to do math. I'm a primary school teacher. Or is that just people taking advantage of the situation? Well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've thought about, you know, what, what if, you know, I think there's a little bit of a rumour here that some of the schools, you know, as of a few days ago, were planning on shutting for a bit extra over Easter, maybe four weeks or whatever. But yeah. you know, that's, it's a long period of time to contain, as you know, two young kids. So, right. you know, I did, I did start thinking about that, you know, the sort of, you know, what can I do to, you know, homeschool them a little bit so they do get a little bit of education rather than just spending four weeks chucking Lego about. Yeah, or playing on the PlayStations as we discussed earlier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bring down the internet. Now, okay, I'm going to ask my American uh, guests here. Uh, would any primary schools or elementary schools would they try and go online if if need be? Ooh, I K through twelve. Texas, so H I S D, Houston, fourth largest school district in the country, has canceled classes, but they're just K through twelve is not set up the same way as higher ed mm. um and so no it's the burden i think the main priority also the decision to cancel <laughs> schools impacts <laughs> a lot of children they get free breakfast and free lunch so they more Enjoy worry me. about the logistics of getting the children <laughs> fed yeah um, yeah of course yeah, I, I, love, I, I love the fact we're hearing kids in the background as adam waits i thought he'd spill that <laughs> yeah i'll be if... very careful where i point this camera to be honest yeah of course yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm i'm on a podcast no really i am yeah, <laughs> yeah but, which is why i'm in the corner in a by a wall <laughs> you know you know it's interesting though like remember a, a few years back it was popular for every elementary school whatever like to give an ipad to every kid and all that uh -huh. and, I, yeah. and i know it got really bad press as in thank you for wasting millions of dollars of our money but you they wonder I haven't, heard any, nope. I haven't heard any news stories that that's actually turned out to be a positive thing now because yeah. you couldn't you think about you really could do some type of google hangouts or google classrooms meet right because all k through 12 is a, for the most part just Joe, I'll, I'll tell classrooms. you our biggest problem of doing something like that in ireland or in europe and adam will back me up gdpr my boy uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that old chestnut yeah that's old chestnut. <laughs> we, my my kids in middle school had uh apple air uh macbook airs given to them so that was a pretty good kind of setup. But the minute they left that uh, middle school area, then now they're in high school. Now that now that when they need a computer, they're not given any. Uh, they do have yeah. I think Chromebooks available to borrow, yeah. but uh, you know, my choice came uh, very early. I'm like, all right, you graduated middle school. I guess I'm gonna have to uh, pony up. And what I did was I bought them each MacBooks. Uh, as they as they graduated middle school and the MacBook has lasted my son at least four years and he's going to start uh, uh, the university in uh, in the fall and that MacBook is still like new so guess what dude you're still going to have that same book you're not getting that you're not getting a, a new book per se and my daughter's in the same boat she, I mean then, then they use it and they're Mac people and Mac is smart to give that away because my kids can't I my kids have no clue what Outlook is right very clever. Yeah. You know, well, welcome to, you know, the, the greatest marketing plan in the world. You start <laughs> them off early and that's what you get. So now guys, let's, let's take away, away from higher ed and education and just talk about the amount of technology conferences that have been canceled or postponed. What's going to happen here? Like, so I know, I know some people have been putting on Twitter, uh, are they going to be all combined into one big tech fest? And uh, let's just go to, to that and get loads of swag. Uh, somebody else want to start? Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening, so no, I can't start. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving stats. I'm doing our, our current stats. Seven, 9,717 current active Zoom sessions going on uh, on campus at the well, moment. I, wow. I, I, was, I was listening. I was listening. Nope. Oh, there. No, no, no. No, no. That one, one, one big massive tech fest. Yeah, absolutely. Never going never gonna oh, to happen. Never going to happen. Okay, is Infocom going to happen? That's the, that's the key question now. <sighs> you know, I, I, I think the other question is, will we be able to travel to it? 
whether if it is running. We so, will be because we love Ireland and the UK. So we'll let y'all in. Okay. I don't know about anybody else. I'm going to really stir the pot here, guys. <laughs> Why has none of these tech fests been made virtual? Hello, we have so many virtual environments. Hey. Hey, 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 wait a minute here. Wait a minute. I know one, yeah. I, I know one that, has, uh, that, was, that was virtual before it was cool. Yeah, but Joe, you're cheap. Isn't there easy. a special edition coming up? Yeah, yeah we have a special edition Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Yeah, I'm going to be going that. Yeah. Um, but no, it, uh, don't be inside. Like, you, you look at so many different press conferences and whatever, and you just say, why aren't all these things done online? Why can't people show us tech yeah. online? So, you know, I mean, it's, it's not as easy as you say, right? though. I mean, right? You, you say, why haven't they gone online? There's a lot of people to that. Sure. Could you actually run? Yeah, it's a, fine uh, with it. I just kind of want to hear the family thing go. I, I just want, I, I, I actually also want to. I, I, I want Adam Stewart with his family at the moment. That's, that's cool. <laughs> um, I'm just waiting. Wait. No, but I, I think that y you say that, but it's not easy to take all those vendors and say, now take what you've been planning and you've spent a lot of money thinking about how you want your booth experience and now just bring it online. You, yeah, it, it, that's true. Yes, it's possible, but not in the same way, right? Mm -hmm. And as opposed to, you know, just doing some type of product release video or, you know, a white paper, that, that's very different. So while it says, yes, can we just throw them online? You could, but what kind of impact? And is that really what the company wants as, you know, their messaging and their branding? They're going to be better off doing something themselves. Like I said on AV and the AM, if you have a little Crestcon or an Xcron, you know, they, they can do their own thing if they need to should you know for whenever you know infocom ends up being held and if it's pushed back or whatever or um well you know what we miss out on we miss out on all the networking and all the drinking that's that's and all the food that's that's the biggest thing that we would and the swag don't get the, and the continuing education it's all about <laughs> the continuing education continuing yes. education that's it yeah here's the real thing i booked my anniversary uh, vacation this year in November, Mr. Dawson, to Ireland with my wife. Oh. So, will I be, be able to go have a beer with the former uh, <coughs> AV Nation winner? Technically, <laughs> information. Chris will back me up on this. We can't, <laughs> we can't go for an award after winning it. Can we, Chris? No. You got three. You got three of us here now. I know all three of them on one call. What is? And we're not on Av Nation's podcast. What kind of? I love when y'all humble brag. Y'all are so cute. <laughs> I've been. Um, I, he has the most amount of trophies. That like he needs to build a second shelf at home. <laughs> hmm. Well, man, I you know my. To, to answer or go into the into the trade show thing, um, mm. you won't see big massive trade shows. I think that'd be great. I think that um, I don't. Well, maybe I can go out on a limb and say that um, Infocom will never be the same after this. Yes. Yeah. Never. I, I, I honestly believe that uh, whether if Infocom decides to go forward with it. Uh, I think it will, it, there will be a massive change next year. Um, and it won't be because of Infocom. I think that there's going to be uh, a lot of different uh, mindset changes when it comes to how to do trade shows. I think, um, unfortunately, a lot of this is very temporary. So the knee jerk reaction is going to be, you know what, from companies that are exhibiting may think of trade shows differently now right? How much money or how far ahead are they asked to commit? In some cases, they're committing to booth spaces, you know, a year plus in advance to find out that it was moved. Now, even if Infocom moves, and let's, let's look at some of these numbers or logistics of things. Uh -huh. uh, I don't have them in front of me, but June is done for a reason. Uh, for the, the one main reason is it is cheap. Uh, it is the perfect sweet spot for getting uh, into Vegas for Infocom, right? right. We're talking about mm -hmm. you know, this is a trade show still. This is not, it's not charity. So 
Uh, yeah. They're looking for, you know, a, a good time that's good for them first and foremost. Um, because if they move it to November, November uh -huh. in Vegas, it's now cold in other parts of the country. People want to go to someplace warm. Vegas rates are up. Things are now colliding. And look at all the changes. Dude, now, just straw poll. How many conventions, conferences, seminars, and expos are we now looking at for the month of September and October? Right. Which Joe can't go to because you're in school. You can't go to because you're in school. Adam yeah. won't be able to go to because he's in school. That's about the only people that can go in October. And right now, the way if they all collide, and these are three-day shows. This is the problem with these postponements. Chris, imagine they did all combine. Now, and I don't mean in the one venue, but like we have COVID-19 going on and it can go on for another maybe two Absolutely. months. And then we can turn around to our bosses in work and say, I want a month off to go to all these trade shows. Will I you give me the budget? Joe, will, they, will your university give you the budget to go on a, a four week vacation on trade shows? You hit on a very interesting point because right now everybody is working remote, right? Hmm. Some people were not, or some employers are telling you to go home because of liability issues, right? Yeah. So they're like, all right, go. Uh, you're right. Where is the HR policies that are now going to come into effect? Because now, you know, are you working from home? You know, I could probably pick up the phone and call a half a dozen people that whose boss is sketchy from about them working at home. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, am I getting, you know, honestly, dude, we still work for a very moms and pops industry. Yeah. Right? You guys in the university, different story. You guys that work in corporate, but we still work for a very moms and pops industry. And mm -hmm. if you're not at your desk, how are you? Are you really working? I mean, this day and age, that still happens. Yeah. yeah. But, but not only that, Chris, you know, like moms and pops, you talk about that. Okay, right. We talk about, we have the internet, we have virtual meeting software. But the simple thing of, you know, are we supposed to go and get our desk phone diverted at, to our mobile phone, which could be our personal mobile phone? And then you say, well, hold on a minute. That's my personal number. I don't want people to know it. There, there are companies that don't pay for cell phone bills. Yeah. So now, okay, so the excuse of that is, all right, get me the program and I'll do soft phone. All yeah. right, can I? Soft phone here, let me get you sitting at your desk. That drives them insane. All right, here's my, my opinion of this whole thing. If you're an employee, get over it. Okay, it is what it is. This is a situation that none the, of us are. If you're, the, if you're the business manager owner or you're the employee. Employee's, the, the over, empl employee's trying to figure out how to make it work. They we're all, but here's the thing. From the highest levels to the lowest, we're all trying to wonder what this is. If yeah. we don't all come together and just say, look, I'm going to do the best for the people I'm here to serve. Then and right, we'll talk about what maybe should have done differently, what maybe we could, you know, what preparations we could make should this happen again. But we all we all need to step up now and say, look, like if you're an IRS, I have one one thing is singly most important, and that is the safety and lives of our students. Period. Yeah. It's a oh, dead stop. Okay. Enough, safety yeah. and lives of our students. I don't care about anything else other you than don't that. Care about after after that. <laughs> we can worry about everything else. So as long as we're taking care of our students and we're making sure that they're safe and whatever we need to do, then we can move on, right? And so if that means like I'm dealing with this, if I have, you know, our work from home and I have my field techs, right? If we have no tickets, what do they do, right? right. Can my programmers and designers, can they work from home? Absolutely. But yeah. what do my field techs do? Okay, right. well, guess what? A Vixen now ha has a wonderful AV technologist certification that we get for free as an elite member. Well, guess what everyone's going to be doing next week? Oh, as good. You're a field tech. I'm going to say, great, come back and get, get, bring me your certification. Yeah. So not only that, yeah, they don't that's have to think. That's such Brilliant. a bad move. Don't come back without that test. You come back <laughs> with that grade. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right. Don't come back. <laughs> yeah, you know, a Vixer have opened that for everybody as well, for the, whether you're elite or not, right? So, I believe so. Yeah. For everybody. 
Yeah, I think so. A, the Agri Technologist one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but we offer as an elite, you also get the training course. It's like a four part training course that's part of it is with your organization. And, you know, they might have opened it up for other too. But I thought, you know what? It, it's a good 40 hours to go through. Yes, Joe. Why they not? opened it up to the peasants that aren't elite <laughs> like USC. Yeah. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, well, you know, like, <laughs> but then um, it's. A, Making it no, rain over here. No, you, you say that on Twitter uh, earlier in the week. I've been uh, working from home for the past few days. So why are you at home for the past few days, No, I, I work from home quite a lot. But as a salesperson for an organization, most of the time <laughs> I'm out seeing right. other people. And most of my meetings are cancelled. So I would still go. But it's the people I'm going to see that are cancelling it. So they're businesses that are saying we're not having people coming in. So oh. I'm kind of spending a lot of time in this room and I'm eating a lot of sweets. Uh, the dog's bugging me a little bit, so I've kicked him out and I'm just stuck in this room. So to get to talk to people that I don't normally talk to, which is my day job, this is why I'm sitting here right now, right? <laughs> Which is a distraction for Noel. Noel's just yeah. like, oh my God, people that have I don't well, have to take this so I feel what? <laughs> so interestingly, um, I was looking forward to people coming to Houston at the end of this month for the PSNI Super Summit, and it's now been canceled. Uh, Noel, how does Asher's feel about uh, Crestron Masters being postponed? You know what? You know how Asher's feels about anything being postponed, whether he's going or not. <laughs> I know, devastated, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a real thing, and that's. I mean, it's. We have so little experience dealing with pandemics. I mean, yep. let, let's be realistic, right? Yeah, and. Yep. I don't know, Justin. Are you old enough to remember uh, mad cow disease? <laughs> oh yeah, I, yeah. I remember like literally seeing all. How old were cows. you in 1980? How old were you? you well, remember? 1980, I was I was seven. But like we we've, we've okay. had our we've, we've had our BSE cases in in the UK and Ireland, where it literally was just piling up a load of dead cows and burning them to cinders, you know. And you know, and then all like I rem I think I was in transition year, maybe. 15 or 16. Let's see who's coming into the call here. Uh, ah, it's Adam. Graham Kirkpatrick. Hello. Another <laughs> award-winning oh, AV professional. Oh, oh my wow. God. Hello, people. <laughs> With wow, ball people bottom. unite. Come on, Graham. Tell us, tell work us from auto today. today. This is not <laughs> where we go. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Graham, Graham, what is that behind you, man? That's a leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... Tell, tell us about like your day. Um, you're over in England. Um, any any news of schools closures or anything like that? Uh, I mean, <laughs> part of my expression: people are losing their shit over here. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Yeah. Where, Literally. Are Where are you? Uh, I'm actually on the school run right now. I run it I'm sat in the car. I have my stepdaughter at home. She's I been at home all day. So, um, yeah. Uh, schools are talking about closures. Uh, I heard uh, a nurse earlier saying to another mum that apparently there's, in West Sussex, which is the county I live in, uh, apparently there's been 60 unreported cases of fevers in secondary schools that haven't been dealt with. Oh, so, wow. No, people yeah, are okay. losing their that shit over that. Yeah. That's the problem I had yesterday and laced all the crap out of my kids when they walked in, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and it was because rumors, rumors and all that is also kind of crazy. So, yeah, Graham, are you? Um, do you th do you think people around your area are ready to work from home? You do a lot of this type of remote work already, don't you? Yeah, I um, I, I've been quite privileged. The NEC uh, employed me 2014 on a home contract, so I've had that ability for five years now. So, um, but no, I don't think I don't think a lot of people are ready to work from home. No, and and this this like well, I think we've summed it up in 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 the pretty much the past hour or ninety minutes that we've been on, uh, doing this podcast. That you know, some people are being told like use your own personal devices, and they could be still running a Windows Seven laptop. You know, uh, should and it's a question that I asked all the guys earlier on. Should companies be telling people to use their own equipment or should they be sending it out by DHL, UPS, Amazon, whatever, and just go, there you go, there's a new laptop? Well, I, I asked a very, very similar question of our, uh, of our European IS team 
uh, earlier in the week that if we were to be working from home and we were to be using our own devices, who's responsible for the data and the, of that I'm transferring between my device and other people? Exactly. Bear in mind that my contract states that misuse of company information can result in, most gross, in gross misconduct and dismissal from the company. So if I'm using my own device and I'm sharing emails off my own personal device and I'm pertaining all of that customer detail and information, who's responsible for that, me or them? And did they give you an answer? Well, they said, you've got a company laptop, you have a company phone, you shouldn't need to use your personal device. So, I mean, it backfired on me, but for people I mean, that aren't in that point. position, like exactly. you said, it's, it, it's going to be a realistic problem. I mean, when does it stop? Would it stop with a, a, a lawsuit? Or, I mean, what? Yeah, no, like, I, I think the, the one thing that I got inundated with requests in the past 24 to 48 hours is Justin can I borrow a headset no you can't first of all I don't have any headsets in stock because uh, no one told me to get any headsets in stock and I don't keep a stock of headsets I'm not a procurement and number two is you're not going to borrow something that you put on your head that's going to be close to your mouth yep. <laughs> yeah. but uh, and I'm, I'm I'm surprised that no one has gone on the cash cow and just gone, I'm going to set on, up an online store selling webcams, selling keyboards, laptops. Oh, and then you go, there's Chris Nito <laughs> saying I have. We distribute that. So it's the, the, the kits are there already. But it comes from, it's for integrators to go back to the end users and go, hey, we have kits for your, for your remote workers. But I mean, and in there, it, you asked earlier and, and Graham kind of touched on it as well about personal devices. Um, listen, to get by, I can go to a coffee shop with my laptop and I have a good laptop, but you know, we're AV people, right? Mm. The last thing you want is to sound like crap and look like crap. You want a better camera and you're going to want a better microphone than what comes in your laptop. Yeah. Right. Um, we are in the business. So that kind of like, it, I remember a comment once Mark, uh, Mark Coxon did some sort of uh, YouTube video where he was playing the guitar years ago. And he still does right this. He, he still does those. <laughs> yeah, he plays the guitar. He puts that up there right below that. Some dude like just comes right in and goes, for an AV professional, you should be, you should be caring more about your audio and your video because it was like off a lap of like a camera. I'm like, yeah. dude, the trolling. Even on, even on just a guy being home playing a guitar, nothing to do with it. So you got expectations. So, I mean, yes, you want to talk about a, a, a conversation piece like, yeah, uh, Zoom room kits for the rooms. All right. What happens when the companies are closed? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so Zoom room kits are still, you know, we're getting a lot of that conversation going right now. And it's been a hot topic for us. But at the same token, people calling in. Right. Yeah. Because my Surface laptop, which is I love my Surface, but my Surface laptop stinks when it comes to uh video and, and and audio reception like you have to put on a headset so you're right and go buy your own even if it's a if even if it's a cheap you know uh wired comes with it i got a i got a handful my kids take it from me all the time right but at the same time that i have a handful of cheap headsets all around i got my own personal stash high hidden off to the side constantly charging and ready to go Right. Yeah. But even my setup right now that I'm talking to you on, I'm using an Aver camera above, which gives me a wide screen. And I don't, I should be using my own products, but I'm not. I actually, I run through a mixer board because I'm constantly on a podcast or doing webinars. So I have the microphone, I have a USB mixer, I have an EQ'd out and that's off to the side. And that's what I'm using now. But when I'm out and about, it's a headset or it's my, my Yamaha YC 200 or it's some other speaker because I need to be, you know, that much better. And I've been in Graham's situation where I've tried to be in, in calls in a car, and it's tough, man. Yeah, no, I, I love him, uh, Graham. I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to. I want to put a, out a disclaimer right now that like I'm not responsible of Graham. Yeah, I'm, on mute. Um, I'm, I'm not responsible of Graham like crashing the car if he's if he's in a call while using his mobile. That's a disclaimer right there. <laughs> so, my, so my wife is now just giving the riot act to the kids. <laughs> we heard. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Tell me you were mute. I thought I was. 
so it's fine. This is a podcast. No, it, was, it was nice knowing you, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to have a wife that loves me. Uh, um, I guess oh. we won't see you on Sunday, but that's all right. We understand why. We'll put a disclaimer out. <laughs> <laughs> the same guys that do AV in the AM. It's fine. I mean, you might see me Sunday. I mean, I might not even be four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, hey. Graham just throws himself out of a moving car right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I'll just throw myself off this bridge. Yeah. No, I, I, I love the fact that, like, we have had so much unpredictability. Like, this, this is Graham collecting his kids, Adam collecting his kids. They, England haven't followed Ireland, Ireland on suit. It's, it's, it, for once, Ireland is ahead of England in closing down the country with great regards to COVID-19. I think it's only a matter of time, Graham, before you're closed. Well, I mean, Justin, we, um, I've had meetings this today alone cancelled uh, that involve people from Midwich. Midwich have shut us down. Mm -hmm. Nobody's been near a Midwich building or a Midwich employee until the 6th of April. We're shut out of Ooh. Sahara. Uh, we're sh um, sorry, no, no. Midwich is, uh, Midwich is next two weeks. Sahara and Imago Scans also taking the precaution until the 6th of April. Um, we've got customers that are saying, I've got bans on travel restrictions because you're in London. Um, and that's where the focus is, is because of London with tubes and other such like. Uh, I or think just dirty probably... Londoners. Yeah. You, Michelle said that. Michelle. Disclaimer, I did not say that. I did not say that. Um, Michelle, I, Michelle, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you into a little secret here. So last summer... Because uh, we live by the beach. I live a quarter I've of a mile pictures. from the beach. Yeah. So, um, and last summer, my children decided, for whatever bizarre reason, they wanted to go to London for the day. So, reluctantly, I was like, okay, we'll go to London for the day. And my stepson, Benjamin, up in London, blew his nose, and it was just black. And he was like, this is disgusting. I was like, and that, my friends, is why I bath every time I get home yep. from London before I talk to you touch you, eat anything, drink anything, because that's what you're in all day. And he's like, I never want to come back to London ever again. That's disgusting. That, that he's 12. Is, he was 12 at the time, he's 13. Yeah. So, you, Justin, yeah. you haven't lived until you've been in a New York City subway. Oh, oh, well. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can watch the rat what? races on the train tracks. It's awesome. Oh. Well, Chris, you think that New York's dirtier than London? Absolutely. Really? God. Wow. Possibly. I mean, now, granted, I've been to London twice, and I've been to your tubes. Your tubes, you can eat off the floor at the tubes compared to what I've seen. Chris, Remember, I'll we find pizza, the... pizza rats. We have rats that chase pizza and take pizza. And it, they were, they were They're viral. They're adorable. Right? Okay, Chris, I, I have to find the report that was published uh, in a national newspaper probably about 10, 11 years ago, where they did an air quality test on the uh, London Underground uh, in the height of summer, and something ridiculous like 1.3% of the air particles were unidentifiable. Wow. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of, it, it, when you said tube, like my first time going to London and it was, you know, oh, we're going to take the tube. I'm like, oh, I'm thinking subway, big deal. Hey, man, I hang out, no problem. I walk down there, I'm like, wow, they said tube, it is a tube. You get in the train, it's like, all right, I need to, maybe I should have skipped breakfast this morning because it was, yeah. I, I, I've I'm never, I'm a wide dude. So I get in the tube, I'm like sideways shuffling in there. And I'm like, dude, this is, this is not comfortable. It's me and Tim on a, me and Tim Albright are standing in the tube. We're like, yeah, Batman and a little bit. <laughs> it was not interesting. But anyway, it's the only way to get around there though. Yeah, it you, is. You, you kind of get. You, do you, do I need to break out my mask? Maybe I'll use my uh, my Black Panther mask next time I go there and scare the crap out of people walking around with that. Do you <laughs> actually talking about masks? Here's another great question uh, because I'm asking it. Um, no, it is another. Here's another great question. Now, if if it's coming up to more tech conventions when they start going again do you think anyone's going to be cheeky enough to go okay here is a face mask sponsored by whatever av equipment supplier will anyone be cheeky enough to start making swag of face masks do you, do you want a fire marketing department? What do you, what do you, what's your goal there i mean dude, that's a little insensitive but you will see people wearing 
masks. I, I don't, I think masks are, and I told the story at a recent thing where I got sick in, in Amsterdam uh, five years ago and getting back on a plane, I let out one cough and I was sick. I had bronchitis or I was like a step away from a pneumonia. I got on a plane. I was already taking meds. I let out one little tiny cough that I didn't want to. It was like one of those, like, you couldn't control it. Like, oh, no. You know, you, you, you yeah. try to cough and hold it in and it comes out and you're, you're holding your, 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 the lady next to me. I don't know where this lady came up with. She had the doctor's mask spread. She's like, I look over to her. She got the mask. I threw the blanket over my head. I woke up in Reykjavik. I said, dude, never again am I ever going to travel without medication on me. Uh, because that was embar- First of all, I'm embarrassed. And, and, and I had guys from Aviation in front of me because that was the first time we had gone to, to ISC. They were looking back, laughing at me, pointing at me. I'm like, I'm miserable. I'm sick. I'm miserable. Lady next to me's got the mask on. And that's when it wasn't like cool. Like right now, I'd probably, well, I wouldn't high five anybody, but I would, you know, thumbs up, dude, for wearing a mask at a plane. No yeah. planes are empty in, in America right now. You can get good upgrades if you're, if you're down with flying. Okay, I'm going to go to, because I have taken up a lot of you guys' time. This has been so much fun, though. I, I'm, I'm actually just saying, let's, let's just keep this going. Um, Chris, if people are working from home, what should they be, um, what, what's the basic necessities that they should have? Uh, quite simply, uh, proper internet. That's not going to drop out on you is my first thing. Check your router. Make sure your router's got some sort of uh, the ability to 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 choose what services are being allowed. Like I put a, uh, you know, my computer and my computers have preference over streaming devices, for example, in the house. That's the first thing I've, uh, that was the first thing I did. Uh, the other thing is um, webcams, better speakers. They sound, it sounds petty, but you don't want to work oh. in a cable. I've done that. Look at do with the, oh. Yeah, <laughs> you, you could put that on the shelf like the whole season. Yeah, oh, I know. I've just just beast in no. I was. Give I was. I was. You need to seventy six. You're working from home and you're wearing pants. You know. <laughs> I thought that's what you were showing. That hey, look, I'm wearing pants today. That's. And awesome. I, <laughs> I wasn't even catch that. I wasn't even looking at Graham on on camera. Graham, that that's a nice home office out of away from all the kids and all the noises. Um. So tell me. I'll go to Graham then. Uh, what what is the basic necessities of you working remotely? Uh, having no kids in the house. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh-huh. can't get away from that. No, no. Um, I, I, do you know what? It, it's it's an interesting topic that we bridge quite a lot, given the fact that we've moved into collaboration marketplaces, etc. Um, I think it just needs to be the understanding that you've got the reliable connection. I mean, most people most people who accept. You join a call on audio only. If you can do audio and video, it's definitely a preference. Um, I think when you're uh, re- a remote worker, you need to set expectations for people as well. So most people know that Friday is a casual Friday as far as I'm concerned. I'm in hoodie, I'm in a pair of sweatpants, I'm in a t-shirt. I won't get on a call in a, in a suit and tie or in a polo shirt on a Friday. People know that. But I think as long as you've got a stable network connection, you can make anything happen. So, yeah. yeah. Noel, coming to you, what you say you've been stuck in in the same room for the past couple of days. So uh, this is like Big Brother for um, for Noel. Uh, what, what is your requirements, basic requirements for working? Well, every, everything that Chris and Graham have said, but key for me, um, I did have a leather reclining chair that I bought from IKEA or some other relative store like that, uh, and then I spent spent some money on an actual proper chair which has completely transformed things. So now I don't have to shuffle around so much. I can relax in a relatively comfortable position. Um, and don't work in your bedroom. Yes. Thing, right? yes. So get out of your bedroom, have a space that's actually for work and dedicated to work. And mm-hmm. outside of that, I think if you've got what Chris has said, what Graham said, and no doubt what Michelle's going to say as well, you've got all the ingredients together that you need there. Michelle, coming to you, what, what's the basic necessities for you? Rosé. Um, a lot of rosé. Yes. Um, you know, like, that's what I, I, I noticed that some of my neighbours were sending me pictures on the WhatsApp residence group. and They had cups of coffee in front of them. It's like, no, I think like if everyone's working from home, it should be allowed to, to, to drink on the job. 
day drinking. Absolutely. I, yeah. I had a boss. Yeah. Oh my God. I had a, a boss that I used to joke. Um, he liked to listen to a lot of the sales, um, old time sales inspirational. And I don't remember if it was like Zig Ziglar, but it was one of those type of guys. And I was going to turn it into a drinking game that every time he said that guy's name that I was going to drink. But then I realized I would just be drinking from morning until night. And that was probably not going to make me very effective. I think, um, you, know, you, you bring up a great point because I used to have uh, colleagues in my old job and they said, they said, oh, can we take this topic offline? Well, if we're doing virtual meetings, that's going to get very confusing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, just, I don't know, I, I, I'm in sales uh, like Graham and Noel and so we're out in the field most of our time, unless yeah. we're just trying to do documentation, catch up, CRM type stuff. Um, so I mean, I, you know, I, I joke that like I run, you know, I run my business from an iPhone and an iPad because that's what I, I normally do. I can't stand dragging a laptop with me anywhere. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of used to being virtual. Um, yeah. Sometimes I'm working from my back patio. People always know because the dogs invariably will bark or those damn yeah. birds will be chirping or something. And the my uh, my earbuds uh, pick it up really loudly for whatever reason. But uh yeah, I mean, having the right gear, I know that um, some of the universities are giving allowances to their employees to go out and buy their own gear and get reimbursed. Others are actually having bundles put together like what Starin offers. Um, so, and, and having those uh, dispatched uh, to all the, the, the teachers and stuff so that they can still do it. But yeah, you know, good headset, monitor, you're good to go. But worst case scenario, you I can do it from your phone. I know how many employees, like you, you bring up a good point about clothing and in a quiet location. I wonder how many employers are going to bring out working conditions of you have to still dress up in, in a suit and tie if you're talking to, if you're, let's say let's, you're a financial firm and you're doing everything virtually because no one's traveling. Do they still expect people to dress in a suit and tie in a virtual meeting because this is their customer? Well, they accept business on top. It's just like a mullet, right? You know, yeah. so business on top and then party on the bottom. Uh, you know, you could basically be in your boxer shorts or, or your thong. I mean, it doesn't really matter from the waist down if you're going to be seated the whole time. Um, but that's, it's funny, a lot of the news anchors are actually wearing jeans and stuff if they're yeah. not in positions where they're, direct, you know, doing the traffic report and standing in front of a video wall or something like that. Um, if they're just a desk anchor, then yeah, they're, they're, Totally casual. Now, they wouldn't be wearing sweatpants or something like we would, or yoga pants like I'm wearing today with my Women's Council t-shirt. Woo! Um, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I, guys, I think we have covered so much here um, about working remotely. It can be done. And I wish that, I hope, actually, that this COVID-19 can prove that working from home should be more acceptable for, yes. for, for people, you know, and even if you do have kids and if you have kids running around or you have to collect kids, that is the norm. It's, let's, let's stop this whole idea of. Justin, can I, can I add something that you did yeah. not cover? Yeah, go yes. you didn't cover. And, and that's for any employer that are watching uh, this at, or people that are listening. Um, there is a certain level of acceptance that we as remote employees accept. Uh, I've, it, it took me a little bit to understand this, but I accept that I am up at six in the morning at times. Mm. And there's, and, and there's times where I'm in my office at nine o'clock at night, right? I have gone to have dinner, come back and go, Oh, you know what? I got to finish a presentation, right? It's kind yeah. of, you know, life happens yeah. in between work at a remote work. Right. I've had to say, hey, listen, I'm not I don't take a break at noon to go have lunch. Right. I don't take an hour, though I'm supposed to or kind of can or 45 minutes. I eat when I can. Yeah. But if I don't eat while I'm working, maybe I have to go, you know, run and pick up, you know, toner for my printer, which is my printer. My co you know, my company's like, what do you need a printer for? You email everything. I'm like, I still need a printer. I still need one too. I, I, I need to read things sometimes out of my hand. Yeah. So I have a printer. I'm like, oh, I got to go get some toner. So I cut out 
for 20, 25 minutes to run to Staples to pick that up. That's on my time, right? That's on my, you know, I just got to manage. On your petrol, on your car. You know, and this, this is the There's, reality of it. You don't have your cafeteria. It's your bathroom. It, dude, I get it. You yeah. accept that, and it's your home working space. Now, there is, in the U.S., you can get into writing off certain parts of your home office during tax season. Uh, uh, most of all have, that has gone away, Chris. I know. And it, it's it, so sad. I started moving to, to, to remote that went away, but you were able to write off certain parts of your, uh, of your house and designate that as, well, this is my office space. This is how I, I make a living. Take yep. note, Irish government. What, what do you think about that, Noel? Uh, do you ever <laughs> see the English government actually doing something like that? That he said, <laughs> this is the wrong time for me to be talking about that because I'm facing a massive tax bill. Um, <laughs> but, it yeah. really does help because you can write off, like, if your office is, let's say, 10% of the square footage of your house, 10% of the improvements, the electric bill, uh, the phone line, all that stuff used yeah. to be able to be uh, deducted. And I sure do miss that. Everybody's like, oh, t tax haul, oh, you know, we overhauled it. This is wonderful. And it hasn't been wonderful for me. I'm just throwing that out there. It, it, I mean, that, that, that's been missed because I could have, you know, I sat, I could sit down with my, my accountant. I show, hey, this is my, this is my spare bedroom that I have. Uh, oh, I have an idea. We'll get Zoom to use their lobbyist <laughs> for Congress to legislate to bring back those tax breaks. Yay! Okay, good. Yeah, Never mind. We got it. Michelle, that think... the impact of this and the, and the move to 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 go home. And oh God, yes. Remember, we're self quarantining. What's different about this as opposed to a Hurricane Sandy or or Houston floods? And I'm talking like Michelle is to the right of me because that's where she is. I'm sorry, I'm realizing that. Is that this is the first for the first time ever? Noel feels my pain. You're right in 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 London. You feel my pain in Dublin. We are all under the same where the hell's the toilet paper question problem right now, mm -hmm. right? It was very much a New Jersey thing when I told you that I didn't have gas during during Sandy, and you guys couldn't understand the impact of not having gasoline at that time made it for very very weird strange times. You know, it living in an area where there's no gas, there's no power, it's hauntingly quiet, right? It yeah. kind of came. It's creepy. It, it not only is it creepy, it kind of gives you that end of the world and the days kind of feel. And you start hearing people that were stealing generators, right? So I have a portable generator because of that, right? But people were taking lawnmowers, which cost 200 bucks. They would take a lawnmower, fire it up, chain, you know, leave it running, and then take your, 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 um, your generator at night when there was no power on, but it was just keeping your refrigerators going, they'd leave that on so you could still hear the hum and take your portable generator and leave, right? Who got sleep that week? Not me. No, I know. It's so bad. Well, and our generator wasn't big enough to handle the spike to support the, uh, the AC system because there's always that big spike. at the. So, yeah, we could run the TV, right? We could... You guys are, are, are like, man, you guys got generators, portable generators. What, do you, yeah. what the world do you guys live in over in the United States? Yeah, man. we. You have to. You, you survive one hurricane or two with no power. Mm -hmm. You go out and you buy – I mean, it's – I have a 5,000 thing generator. can't do my heat and electric. Right. Uh, it can do certain things in my house. It keeps up yeah. with generators, maybe a couple fans, some lights. It'll get me going, but it's not business as usual. Uh for that, I'd have to go to my next door neighbor who has a whole house generator, and uh, those things fire up on natural gas. When oh yeah, I would love to have one of those. You're looking at a you know at least a ten to fifteen thousand uh, dollar install for a house to to have that backup generator, and then there's a maintenance piece that goes off on that as well because they're car batteries essentially that are constantly charging. It's almost like it's like having a Tesla hooked up to your house, I guess, mm. uh, but it's running on natural gas. So, well, uh, and, and this is the, like you, you say about this, some parts of the states needing this. You know, I know that some parts of Ireland don't have proper internet connectivity. This is going to be interesting when it comes down to higher ed and, well, even in, in private sector environments of going, sorry, I can't actually work. You know, I like, and I'll, I'll give an example of private sector. You know, I have a lot of 
friends that work in financial trading since I I used to work in the, in the private sector as well. And like people are saying, look, I can't try and mind three children at home while also um, while while also uh, dealing with financial figures. You know, and and that's the reality of it. Uh, Chris. Going back to um, some of the clothing and and how to what the basic necessities is, I see Chris, you switched on on Zoom, which I really love as a feature. You can blank out your background on 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 Zoom and use the different uh, styles and whatever, and you don't even need a green screen for that. It's very good in in blacking out the background. He was had the Golden Gate Bridge there. Um, earlier on and um, i played around with this as well am i right in saying guys and anyone correct me here that's zoom is zoom is ahead of its time for um you uh, have to have a green screen to no do you that? don't even need to have no. A green screen. no and and does teams do it does any does skype does does any any other virtual meeting software do that type of um application uh, i think teams does a blur yeah it blurs. it'll do a blur but it won't they haven't gotten to that part yet that Zoom has. <laughs> I don't need to do that for that. No, I'll just patio. <laughs> you cut the grass, Chris. I no lie. I've got it, honey. I shrunk the kids. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. That, but you know, I, I, I have to say that's a great feature that Zoom has. That I don't think. Sorry, I, I wasn't really paying attention while typing down that number. It has any other applications got it? Has any virtual meeting software? I don't. I don't think. So. Any Microsoft Teams or any of them have it, Chris? No. But Justin, can I add something which is a uh, which yeah. is a question I, I I always mean to ask people when talking about Zoom. Are our users, um, and I'm speaking with a little bit of bias to knowing some of the answers from my internally with my company, but are, are our users and other Zoom users proficient in education how to use Zoom correctly? i.e. virtual backgrounds, using transcripts, using recording features, because that's all going to be prevalent of importance moving forwards, right? Great question. And like even I was not aware of where to find the feature of turning on that little green screen background um, earlier on uh, until I went into some of the menus and started playing around with it. I was not aware of that. You know, and the, 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 the crazy thing about it is that... Um, People that people that don't know where like even to buy US or even get USB headsets that sometimes they just use like the the old headset would have the two uh, plugs in it one for the speaker one for the microphone into your tower. Look at that! Someone's I'm cross promoting. Oh, I like it! I like it! <laughs> yeah, I I I do like it. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the way I, I look at it um, as well, that people don't uh, have the knowledge of what do I need to do a Zoom call. I I know from higher ed anyways and, and supporting a lot of these virtual meetings, people turn around and say, I want to do a Skype call. No, you don't want to do a Skype call. Or if, if they say, I want to do a Skype call, and I brought this up on AM, AB and the AM, and um, they, they, they say, I want to do a Skype call. I said, okay, have you got a webcam? No. Have you got a headset? No. Okay. Here's the phone. <laughs> you know, and that's, and Graham, that, that really does answer your question. Like it, it does. People, yeah. People don't, don't, don't understand this. Like we, we spoke about it earlier on in the show. You, you joined us quite late there. Not, not, not saying that that's a fault, but you I had an actual call to deal with. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and actually I had, I was actually working, you know? Yeah. And, um, but it, it's like that. Some people don't even know how to send a proper email, you know, <laughs> you know, that, that we're handholding here. And then we're asking them to work from home and, it, it, it comes down to if people are being asked to put in emergency plans in place, shouldn't management be coming out and going, okay, we're buying, let's say, 50 Dell computers. I, I, yeah, I did use Dell. I just went there. We're, we're going to buy 50 computers. They're in Ireland. That's fine. Yeah, they're in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, we're going to buy 50 <sighs> computers. We're going to buy 50 headsets. They're all going to be the same. Like, you know, a good... AV environment, we read this in a big CTS qual, um, books and everything. A good environment for an end user is everything is the same. 
Now we're asking staff to go home, use their own devices, and then we're supposed to be able to give tech support on using a device that like is not part of whether it be private sector, whether it be public sector, it's not part of their environment and you're supposed to be able to support it. Uh, and yeah, and agree on that, Justin. And that's a great piece about the technology. I mean, whilst people can make the technology the same, the one thing they can't guarantee is the stream. It's yeah. ever going to be the same bandwidth. I mean, typically now I have four children at home. I know yeah. at least two of them are on the PlayStation because I can hear them arguing. My, my daughter's in the bath, so she's not doing anything. That's just fine. And one of them is probably watching Netflix. So I can already tell, thankfully, that if I was on the same connection as the rest of the house and I didn't have a private connection just to my home office, this, this would be getting battered now. Thankfully, I have two lines into the house deliberately for that reason. Having, six, smart. Children, having, having six children at home, I know that in the areas where school holidays and I'm working at home, the internet takes a pound in. And then I don't mm -hmm. get... I can't play Fortnite fast enough, or YouTube's not downloading quick enough. <laughs> now, I don't Graham, care. I'm working fine. But... Graham, does your company pay for one of those lines? No, I pay, I, it's a choice I make entirely for it. Right, so, and and this comes back to who should be responsible for making the payment. And oh, ah, and there ah. she comes. Graham chooses to invest in himself. Okay, Justin. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you want to say hello to Justin, Michelle? Chris. Hi. 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 This is what we love about working remotely, guys. Yeah, you know, you know, I've been here. My it's like my it's like Fortnite with nerds. Yeah, <laughs> it absolutely is. Yeah. You not gonna say hello to anybody? No. No, gone all shy, looking at herself in 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 the camera. Yeah, she's and... like, oh, I can see myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you made me some soup. Lovely. Or Thank dinner. You. Mike Slammer, hello. Welcome to the show. This is uh, this is awesome. I saw the I saw the, the the little Zoom thing that was posted on Twitter and thought it was cool to see everybody in real time for a change. Now, now that is a, that's a cool background, Mike. Um, Sharing, guys. Yeah. Now, Mike, has things gone into lockdown where you are? Sure. So, uh, for those who don't know, I'm one of the AV engineer leads for Discovery Channel. Uh, and we just got a notification that it's official. Our building is going to be shut down through March. The rest of where are y'all located? Where is Discovery Channel located? Uh, we are global, so all offices are going to be closed. All offices. Are wow! Yeah. Wow! wow. Can, I ask, can I ask a question? Yeah. Of that, it, does that mean that there's no, like the doors are shut, or can you guys like? I was a former end user tech manager for many years, so. When the company closed, it was an opening for me to go, you know what, I'm going to get into all these rooms, reboot all the codecs, do some quick updates, do some updates. Hey, the boardroom is finally going to be available. Do you have access to spaces or you're talking, everything's getting shut down, they're spraying everything, they're bubble wrapping it, and we'll go back in a couple of weeks. That is a great point. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, questions surrounding what it will mean for business critical users. Uh, right now, because we do also, you know, we're TV, we have TV channels and broadcast to manage, you know, anyone, you know, on the broadcast teams are still, you know, expected to be staggering. Uh, the IT and the AV teams respectively are staggering our office hours. Uh, so if there is something mission critical that we need to be on site for, the expectation is like, yeah, you know, please be on site and handle it. Uh, other than that, though, the directive from our leadership is don't worry about it. Just stay safe. And will there be a lot of programs that are going to be pre-recorded then, Mike, uh, ready to go? Uh, everything is pretty much... Business as usual, as far as broadcasts are concerned, I don't think folks watching 90 Day Fiance are going to be impacted at all. I love 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> oh my God. I have no idea what that show is about. I, I've no, oh, it's I, wonderful. I've this program. Oh, yeah, it's the uh, best I, show ever. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Uh, it, it sounds like some type of dating program, is it? 
It is. It's where, uh, yes, uh, people are dating their long distance relationships. And in the U.S., you can get a, a 90 day fiance okay, Michelle, visa. I'm already married with kids, so we can't, we can't <laughs> talk about this program. Uh, so, it's yeah. So good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good show. Like it, yeah. But and um somebody tell me what it's about because we've no premiership, no championship, no rugby, no NBA, no NHL. I know. Brave, Brave, Brave Brave much much I know. Mike, what are you there. watching television? <laughs> Mike, what do you got for him to watch, Mike? You got anything you I can mean, his way? The guy, so the guy right is... now you can go to <laughs> Discovery Go. I think it's go.discovery.com. We have Apocalypse Preppers. Free to watch. <laughs> <laughs> <I love it. laughs> Dude, number one, the the number one video on Netflix, the most watched video this week on Netflix already is Outbreak. I, I do well believe that. Oh, yeah. I believe that. Yeah. Now you're studying up? Dude, I've been watching programs on Discovery Channel about the end of the world for years, dude. And I was always the crazy one. I'm like, wow, they were talking about a pandemic. Somebody's talking about tsunamis. I mean, yeah. like, end of the world type. Here we are. I mean, and, and if, if everything fails, Chris, we, and it's, as well as Mike with, with Discovery, if they all go into shutdown, I'm sure we can always tune into the God channel and see, like, start learning about revelations or something like that. Just binge watch whatever you can right now. There's a, a you know, a Graham, there, right now, sports channels here in the US are playing replay videos of old sports channels. You know what? Uh, <laughs> I was re watching a game that's five years old, but so and so had a hat trick that game. You're more than welcome to. to Chris, it, it's door. funny you say that. I actually undeleted the last four NBA recordings I've had on Sky TV from the Skybox earlier just to get me through the weekend. So the sad thing is, and this is where Noel's going to laugh, I've got to watch Philadelphia at least twice. Uh, yes, yeah, so you're going to be watching wins, right? Uh, they won one, they lost one. Yes. <laughs> so. But is the – so you're talking about sports being canceled. The last of the – not really a sport. Um, for those that don't know, I, I, I'm one of those guys who gets a lot of inspiration on social media from, from wrestling. Uh, so I follow that because no better, no better program to me shows off how to do marketing better than, 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 than like a WWE who is essentially the, the brand. And then you have all the little brands below it. Then each individual person is their own brand. So there's my social media uh, playbook. Tips and a, tricks. In, in, a, in a heartbeat. But um, they're the only ones left standing. XFL, which is recent NFL kind of football, just canceled now here in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, WWE is the only one that's still kind of going. But, that's, but Chris, they're suggesting over here that WrestleMania 39 will be in an empty stadium. That is is true they're they're thing. actually considering i was reading that yesterday they're one of the few places that can get an arena and actually just film uh just with the one-on-one -on -one type thing yeah you right? know what you know this one meter distance for the covid so in, in other words when they're going to do a slam dunk or a, a slam on 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 the wrestling mat, mat is it going to look absolutely pathetic now I, I don't I, well obviously you need two people to tango in wrestling and but th it's it's so not that it's more storylines than anything else but you know that we're doing this with masters which is a you know it's golf it's one guy in a tee masters has been now canceled right, right? now granted the masters gets a hundred thousand people into uh into the town and all the everything that goes with it but you know the masters is one person they can essentially kind of still pull off the masters and you know they don't want people clapping anyway i mean golf class i know i was gonna say the players would love it if all these what is this world coming so when the masters gets canceled yeah we're screwed dude get ready for you, disney better open up their vault for every little possible disney movie that's out there and netflix don't fail me now uh and, and, like, and discovery go but that, and, that, thank god for netflix and amazon prime <laughs> Guys, we talked earlier about like virtual meeting softwares offering from the pro version free of charge until this COVID-19 passes over. How come the likes of Netflix and Disney and Sky aren't going, we'll offer free channels right up until the end of May, terms yeah. and conditions apply? There's one for, the, for, for Mike there. Uh, do you see that happening, Mike? 
I mean, I can't, I can't speak to what we're going to be doing. Uh, I think um, there's an opportunity here for uh, media owners and publishers, distributors to really capture new audiences in big ways. Um, big focus on content pushes. Uh, th this is a golden age of TV that we live in. There's, there's God tier shows that are out right now and there are amazing unscripted content that discovery pushes you know if there, there's something for everybody if, you, if you're into dating if you're into home improvement if you're into action adventure thrillers there's stuff out there for everybody right now now mike uh, how much are you able to work from home like now, now that people are saying that like work remotely will you yeah. be able to dial in and like what what type you're talking about a broadcast network. What is the IT securities of being able to dial into something like Discovery and be able to remote access and, and, and do all this type of stuff? Yeah, I mean, we've positioned ourselves in a, in, a, in a fantastic way where people can work remotely, I can work remotely, and the business impact is not, not great. I mean, well, let me rephrase that. It's great. You know, we can still do our jobs every day and I can work from home. I can remote in. I still have full access to the servers, to the admin pages. You know, I can manage our back end of Zoom, make sure all the meeting health is good. Uh, you know, I've, I've been in and out of calls with various user groups who are meeting, you know, working collaboratively. They don't know about the whiteboard function. They do now. Um, it's, it, this, is, this is what we're here for. Now, okay, you have to beat Dr. Joe Way on his uh, stats of how many current active Zoom sessions there was on his campus. That was 9,717. How many would Discovery have on a uh, basis? Oof. oof. I mean, hold on. I'm going to have to get you an answer. Yeah, that, that I, I hope he can be. I think everyone is waiting with yeah, anticipated. Kind of lower going on here. Like, so, so what yeah. was what was what was it? Uh, Nine thousand seven hundred and seventeen active Zoom sessions on campus. That was oh, yeah. uh, that was live in the in the moment. Yeah, live and in the moment, huh? Yeah. All right. Um, I think uh, I think I'm gonna blow that out of the water. Go on. <laughs> 22,472. 22,000. Dude, do you know what? Like, as I, I go on with this this podcast, I just feel that, like, I, I don't know the stats of my university. I'm, I, I, I'm, it's true. I don't know that. But, like, it, that just makes me feel like a minnow. Uh, <laughs> and I say it makes Joe feel like a minnow. I don't know. Like, Graham, have you heard of different universities over there? Noel, have you heard of UK universities that would be able to handle such pressure? Not to the, not at that level. No, not to that number. I mean, the, the closest thing I've heard, Justin, was when I attended Zoomtopia. And I think, funny enough, Mike may have actually presented on the stage at Zoomtopia last year. I sat through a session uh, about super, super users. Texas A&M, they had something stupid like, 77,000 active users across campuses. Um, wow. um, I'm trying, I think it was Discovery. I, I'm, I may be getting myself a little bit confused here now, but they uh, televised the uh, championships from France last year and it was something like uh, 3,000 devices, 27,000 active members of staff managing it, over a hundred thousand possible connections. I mean, let, let's be fair. At the moment, with the ability to to be changed, and I won't say to change the world, but to be changed by what's happening in the world right now, the possibilities are only limited by people's imaginations. Yes. I mean, the the, to the tools are richer for us than they ever have been before, both from a video and audio, software and a hardware perspective. It's not going to take much now for people to really have to sit up in the dawn of realization and realize that we are in the 21st century. Yeah. Ten, ten years ago, this would have crippled the world. Oh, oh, oh 100%, 100%. I mean, you've only got to look at, and whilst it's a very, very sparse comparison, you only have to look at what happened in the immediate months of the financial meltdown in 2008. Mm. People had no way of being able to do anything other than travel to the office 
not knowing what that day was going to hold. Yeah. So, 10 years ago, we'd have, this would have been crippled us. I mean, now this is an opportunity. I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> right now, this is an opportunity. And it's great moment to talk. Yeah. Right now, this is an opportunity for people to really sit back and go, you know what? We've got a can-do approach to this now, not what you can't do approach. And yeah. I think that, I think the organizations like Discovery, some of the big, big, big universities, they'll be leading examples. And people will have to sit there and go, hang on a second, you've got, as in what Mike just said, over 22,000 connections. You've got 22,000 people that have got different experiences, understandings, expectations of what that video call is going to be. You've potentially got 22,000 different hardware setups, configurations, software platforms, user abilities, but they still manage to do it. So why can't we with 125 employees? Why can't we with 10,000 employees? Yeah, exactly. And I, do you know what? I honestly believed from even before getting on this call, this can be nothing but great for the AV community. It just shows what it depends. Needed. Yeah. It depends on what field. Yes. Right? right now, okay, so we've talked about the good. Now, Mike will tell you that there's a bad side to it too because he spent some time on the freelance side and on the live event side, right? It's mm -hmm. tough right now to be a freelancer, right? Yeah. You are a booth builder. Dude, my heart goes out to the people that think about the conferences. We only look at, you know, oh, we're not going to go see our booths and stuff like that. But how many guys are displaced now because they de depended on that, mm -hmm. right? Chris, um, you're on Facebook. Sorry to interrupt. You're on Facebook. Are you on the AV disasters pages? No. I'm not. I, so th this topic has come up today on AV disasters. Uh, let me just give you, I mean, sorry to interrupt you. I didn't mean to be no, 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 no. Um, we've got guys that are on the, on the group right now saying, uh, how much does this cost us? And we're, we're talking, uh, if I just look at these first five people, uh, some guy is $10,000 down month, this month, not even year to date. Uh, this guy, $3,000 down, and he's had three uh, gigs canceled. Well, that's very true. The live yeah, events got, are going to This guy, $6,000 yep. down, was supposed to be doing Coachella, which has been canceled. Um, I'm $10,000 down, and I've had my next five gigs canceled. I mean, it, this is, you're right. This is killing the freelance community. Yeah. And it's not just killing the freelance community. This can put under some of the smaller shops that yeah. serve smaller event stages and clients around the area. So it's not just freelancers or technicians, it's actual full on companies. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it has its pros and its cons. I hope that I, I look at the Irish government and I just hope that not just for tech, but for people that are sole traders, I, I have cousins that are working in restaurant fields as well. And I'm just thinking this could put them out of business. So yeah. let's hope that there's money invested into the economy in one way, shape or form that's going to support these. On a technology base, well, let's hope this, this proves that what can be done. And that, that's where we started the program nearly two hours ago now, guys, of what can be done with regards to tech. And we've had such great fun at the moment all day i could i could continue this all day long but i think my wife will divorce me as my kids are screamed down in, in, in so justin I, I have one question to ask you which is uh yeah actually just you I, I think i have to be honest i don't know where mike resides but how is this going to affect saint patrick's day for next saint patrick's week day is cancelled absolutely 100 percent cancelled all all saint patrick's day parades in ireland are cancelled that's crazy 250 years of a, a St. Patrick's Day parade in New York City, never once canceled. Until this year. Wow. Can canceled. Yep. Canceled, Mike, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. And, and Graham, to your question, I'm, I'm in New York City. Thank you. Sorry. I, I didn't uh, know. No, well, I didn't want to assume there is obviously more than America than New York City, but. Uh, okay. yeah. I think I think we have to give an, a, an applaud to uh, Joe Way, who put an Irish left con in the background and did something St. Patrick's Day festivity wise. And I don't even have an Irish flag in my studio here. It's 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 desperate. It's bad. I apologize. Joe wins the award for like celebrating St. Patrick's Day uh, for next week. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to say the Christian theme of St. Patrick's Day and. Guys, all stay safe out there because uh, 
Absolutely. And, you know, and don't get cabin fever. If you want to do this again, by all means, this has been great fun. I have had so many guests. Uh, I, I, I feel like we're going to, I'm going to put this as a pre-record up on something like Facebook Live or YouTube Live, where everyone can just comment along the program and make it look like it's live, because I, I just actually don't want to edit this. This, this <laughs> was working remotely, working from home. Mike, I could talk to you all day. I think we'll have to do a private message at some stage. Hey, and, and, and do, that, that sounds great, Mike. Yeah, I'd love to, love to catch up with you because I think we, I, I've seen each other on a, AB and the AM, but I haven't actually talked. And uh, even though I've, I've been following your, your podcast for some time, okay, I'm going to plug the other podcast, AB Jam, Chris with all his AB and the AM stuff. And... Um, Graham, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've Welcome. Had, we've had Michelle. We've had so many. We've had Adam Harvey as well. Uh, it's been a great program, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, have something to eat. Uh, I don't know what time of the day it is now, Chris, in 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 the states. It, 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 yeah, it, it, it's it's fine. It. Someone was bound to talk with it on mute. Yeah, exactly. We we'll, uh, but guys, thank you so much for taking your time out uh, and enjoy the rest of the time of staying at home and and don't suffer from cabin fever, whatever you do. And we'll speak on Sunday on Twitter, guys. Yes, indeed, we will. Like, like, like our show. Don't forget to subscribe to All Things Techie in your favorite podcast store. The All Things Techie Podcast is a product of the Extreme Media Network. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, please visit www.extrememedia.ie. That's X-T-R-E-M-E media.ie.